what are the best foods to include in your hysterectomy recovery diet to maximise your tissue healing? And come to think of it, which foods will help you overcome hysterectomy side effects like gas and constipation? Hi, I'm Michelle, and today I'm going to guide you through a hysterectomy recovery diet that's going to help you maximise your tissue healing after your surgery, whether it be a vaginal hysterectomy or abdominal hysterectomy, and also to help you manage your bowel, so particularly problems like gas and constipation. So I've divided this presentation up into four sections. First of all, we're going to go through recovery, so maximising your recovery and the best foods to maximise your internal recovery. Then we're going to talk about the gut microbiome and some of the foods that will help you restore that. Then I'm going to talk about gas producing foods that you might want to avoid. And then finally we'll go through some of the constipation foods that will help you manage constipation and manage your bowel during your hysterectomy recovery. So we'll start up with protein. After your surgery, your protein needs are increased. And this is because the body uses protein on a daily basis, it can't store protein. So we need to be eating protein every day during your hysterectomy recovery. Now, ideally, you're having two and a half to three serves of protein. So this means that you're trying to have a serve of protein just about every main meal. So how much is a serve of protein and what are the best protein sources? Well, you can take a look on screen here and I've got an image of some of the protein sources and I'm going to go through some of those. So a serve of protein is a, um, basically a serve of dairy, which is a cup of milk or also two, and it can be low fat, that's absolutely fine. And this is three quarters, and I don't want to tip it, three quarters a cup of yogurt. And again, it could be low fat yogurt. Greek yogurt is great because it's great for the gut microbiome, but I'll talk a bit more about that in a minute. Another serve of protein is two eggs. So two eggs would be great as a starter for the day to set yourself up well for your internal recovery. And also too, if you happen to not be a meat eater, tofu, so you've got your 170 grams of tofu, or also too, if you do eat meat, you could have a small can of um, tuna or salmon, and also too, um, your red meats. So your red meat like um, your lamb, your uh, pork, are all great, especially after a hysterectomy if your iron levels are down. And also to um, lean meat for your chicken and your turkey sources as well. So they're ideal protein sources that if you include three times a day will really help your internal tissue recovery and you optimize your recovery so that the body can actually use the amino acids from the protein and lay down extra collagen in your tissues. Now, the second thing I wanted to talk about is your gut microbiome. Some ladies develop long-term abdominal or bowel problems after a hysterectomy, and it might be abdominal pain, it might be problems with bowel movements, and this really seems to be no cause. And what we think is sometimes after surgery, the stress of surgery, or also to antibiotics after your surgery, can affect the gut microbiome. And that's all the bacteria, fungi, that are living, the trillions of them that live in your bowel, and they basically eat um, to certain types of foods. Now before you go reaching for probiotics, there's also research to suggest that probiotics won't restore the original gut microbiome. And also too, I have to wonder, if you're taking probiotics, how do you know what you're deficient in? So you might be taking certain probiotics, but you don't know which bacteria you need to actually restore. So. The solution is to reach for prebiotic foods. Now, again, you can see an image of prebiotic foods. Prebiotic foods feed those helpful gut bacteria that might have been affected during your surgery. So to, to restore those, you can have foods like, and those are the ones I really like. Again, we've got the Greek yogurt. We've got bananas, which are a great source of prebiotic food for some of your gut bacteria. Other things like your kombucha, so your drinks, or kefir, they're great sources of um, food for the, for the gut biome. And also too, we've got things like asparagus, so you could have your fresh asparagus, or you could have tinned asparagus. 
And I want to make a mention of the root vegetables. So root vegetables are particularly good, but especially after you've cooled them. So you cook them and then cool them. And if you eat them, then they're really starchy. And that's the way to get lots of um, nutrients in for your gut bugs. Also too, um, we've got onions and we've got garlic. Now I want to just put a, a warning on with these ones. These are great foods along with leeks for your gut microbiome. However, they can be ga gas producing foods. And we've already mentioned the, the issue with side effects with gas after a hysterectomy, which can be really painful. So these might be things you wanna be very careful with introducing, especially in the early stages. So they're foods that can help restore the gut microbiome. Now let's move along to foods that are likely to cause gas. And we've already just looked at two of them, haven't we? We've just looked at ga um, garlic and we've looked at onions. But other gas producing foods are these. So you might be someone who likes a lot of beans, so legumes. Legumes are also a great source of protein. I should have mentioned that at the outset. But I haven't gone into detail with them because again, they can cause a lot of gas. So tinned um, beans are usually less gas producing than beans that you've actually uh, that are dried and that you actually restore with water before cooking. So you might, if you're going to have some beans, maybe start with a small amount of tinned beans uh, and just check your tolerance with those. But other foods that can cause gas are some of the foods like your pears. And pears are also, I mean, pears are great for softening the stool with constipation, but they're also high in fructose, so they can produce a lot of gas. So you've got to be careful with pears and also with prunes. Dried fruits, I've got some dried figs here, which I love. Uh, any of the dried fruits, particularly if they're sulfur dried, will increase gas in your belly. So you want to be really careful with those sorts of foods. As far as drinks go, unfortunately coffee, or ca caffeine in the coffee, uh, can actually produce um, gas in the bowel, as can soft drinks and beer. So be really careful with your consumption of those foods after your hysterectomy, especially in the early days, and then you might want to gradually reintroduce them afterwards. Now, finally, let's move on to foods for constipation. Now, constipation is a really common problem after hysterectomy, and it's often really unexpected, isn't it? So what we need to do to manage constipation is to soften the stool, because the longer the stool uh, takes to actually pass through the bowel, the more dried out it becomes, and that's what creates the hard stool and lots of pain when you're trying to empty. So we want to make emptying as comfortable as possible post hysterectomy. The way you can do that, if you're already constipated, don't reach for fiber, that's a really big mistake. And you can see more about or learn more about that in my video above about foods that high fiber foods, and also too more about foods to soften the stool as well. But got to be careful with that high fiber, resist that temptation, and reach for foods that will soften the stool without overloading and causing further blockage. But do this after you've emptied. So it's important to perhaps get some Movacol, Osmolax, or Miralax to empty first. And a lot of ladies take these medications for the first six to eight weeks post-operatively just to keep the stool soft and moving through. And you can check with your doctor if that's okay for you to take as well. Now, foods that will soften your stool, well, there's quite a few. We've got rolled oats. So oats, rolled oats, fantastic um, food for softening in the stool. Um, and they're also really nice for your gut as well. Other foods here, I've got a little platter here to show you. So we've got your leafy greens, so your Asian greens, like your bok choy, wonderful. Uh, spinach, so your spinach leaves are terrific. Your fresh fruits, so things like your nectarines, your stone fruits, your apricots, plums, uh, they'll be great. As in, I've already mentioned pears. So pears are great for softening the stool, but again, being really mindful about the fructose content in those. And also to kiwi fruit. So kiwi fruit are great in that they often don't produce gas. So they're a great fruit to have. They're low FODMAP, which is also really handy, but they are also really nice for softening the stool. So that might be something you might like to um, include in your diet. Some, in some places they're called Chinese gooseberries. In Australia, we call them kiwi fruit. And also too with your breads. So you're obviously going to reach for your multi-grain breads or your whole grain breads. Um, you might choose whole meal if you're already constipated and then move on to multi-grain once you've cleared, cleared your bowel. So 
they're some of the foods that you can actually choose to soften your stool. So I think you can see there's quite a bit more than what you might think to your hysterectomy recovery diet. It's really important that you're having your protein for your internal tissue healing. It's also important to think about restoring your gut microbiome and thinking about the bacteria and the fungi, viruses in, there, in your body that actually need support to recover and restore um, the, your natural flora, flora, internal flora. Also too, we talked about your gas producing foods to be really mindful of, and you might gradually reintroduce some of those uh, during the course of your recovery. And then finally, we talked about foods that will soften the stool and not reaching for too much fiber initially, you might start to reach for your higher fiber uh, after your bowel has cleared if you're already constipated and the importance of keeping that stool soft. So I really hope this information helps you with your hysterectomy recovery diet. Uh, if you found this video helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you can give it a like below because that encourages YouTube to share the video with other ladies too. And I just wanted to make a mention too that some of you have been donating for me. Uh, thank you so much, I really sincerely appreciate that. Um, that helps me keep bringing the content to you, so thank you very much. So I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Goodbye for now.